Brian Savick and welcome back. And today we're discussing tax structures and how they benefit medical professionals. Uh, we're lucky enough to be joined by Mark Scott, our resident property expert. And um, Mark's been fortunate enough to be dealing with med medical professionals for over 10 years now. And uh, from, from memory, our early discussions have been about his previous uh, laboratory management and the fact that uh, he has quite a Bachelor of Science himself. So Mark, welcome here today, and thank you very much for joining me. Cool. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having us. Excellent. Now, tell me, I've always thought medical professionals will pretty much have this type of stuff sorted out already. Uh, yes, they, they do. So, so I'll say yes and no when you say about this sort of stuff. Yes, they do have the structures sorted out, generally, and most do. Uh, there's a few exceptions to that. Uh, that's because they've obviously um, got a, a, you know, a high income and they need, it's, there's a vested interest to make sure they get the right structures. Um, so the point I want to make today is not so much about the structures, but what asset you put into those structures as an investment. So the structures are probably all set up in terms of, most likely our uh, medical professionals, are not, well, well, generally they'd be a sole trader. Under that they'll have a couple of trust structures, one trust which operates a practice perhaps, uh, often a family trust, and then under that family trust there's some companies, um, some potentially some unit trusts, some other things. So there's a lot of trusts, entities, all that sort of stuff. And if medical professionals aren't familiar with their, ter their terms, then they better get their accountant pretty quick or find a new accountant. Yeah. Um, so they're in place generally. Um, but what I find is an issue is that they often uh, feel as, though, okay, well, I've got all those structures in place, therefore it's all okay. And you put money into those structures and then where does that money go? Often it ends up in some kind of uh, run-of-the-mill managed portfolio, mm. uh, perhaps a share portfolio and stuff in the wrong shares. I'm a property guy, obviously, but if within that share portfolio there'd be some, you know, what they call property assets, but I don't really see as property assets. Um, so it's it's about, I suppose, I, an analogy I use is it's about getting a, your paddock all sorted out and having lots of green grass in there and all that sort of stuff. But if your investment's a donkey, or if you've got another number of donkeys in that paddock, they're still donkeys, no matter how fantastic that structure or that thing that surrounds them is. So you can go through all of this trouble of building a costly structure, making sure you've dotted all your I's, crossed all your T's in that regard, and received all the expert advice in regards to the actual structure itself. Yep. But if the investment is rubbish to start with, Yep. then the structures actually not going to add any value to you at all. That's right, yeah. So those, the structures, that we'll see that you know, we're saving some tax here and some saving some tax there. The focus then is away from what you should be achieving. Because we've got medical professionals obviously made a big commitment to their profession, uh, an ongoing commitment that's you know, through their practice, through their um, whatever activity they're doing you know, at the moment. Uh, and that's, that's a big commitment and they're you should expect better better than average results at least mm. and really sort of supercharged results um, in that environment because they deserve it. 